Just about all of the 2018 Overwatch World Cup rosters have been announced, with some serious heavy hitters that I'm going to break down my thoughts on the different rosters. If you haven't seen Team Korea's, just wait for that bombshell, be saving that for the end. But also, we finally got some patch notes for the PTR to know specifically what things have been changed, and there's some surprises on there. The biggest one is that there's already been a nerf to Wrecking Ball, and what it does is reduce the movement speed of Grappling Claw from 22 meters per second to 20 meters per second, which might seem small, but every bit of mobility that you take away from Hammond is definitely going to be a big deal, and for reference, characters like Diva Thrusters, I know moves at 12 and a half meters per second, Soldier Sprints at 10, which is the same as Hammond's roll move speed, so now Wrecking Ball doubles that whenever he uses Grappling Claw in order to get that top speed. Where they move with the balance of Hammond is going to be interesting because he is so devastating with the speed at which he moves, and the problem is he either is going to be successful at doing those intense lightning fast dives, or he might not be playable if you start to take away his ability to do that. It's kind of boomer bust for him in my opinion, and at least I think the balance of it more or less will come down on how effective crowd control is at stopping him from getting in and around to land pile driver to set up your entire team for big wombo combos. Now, oddly enough, these patch notes don't include the Mercy Damage Amp changes, which we have covered previously, and since some of that seems to still be up in the air and there's no official announcement about it yet, we're not exactly sure what the rule set for what Damage Amp is going to do for different ultimates. We'll sort of have to wait and see how that works out. The most notable one, of course, is Hanzo, who, at least on the live server of the game, whenever you Damage Amp Dragon as it goes into a grav and the enemy is using trance to save it, the damage and healing will kind of equal out, and if you add any extra damage on top of it, you can overcome the trance healing, which you'll still be able to do even if you can no longer damage amp the Hanzo because you could just damage amp something else to get the same effect. Do you know what I mean? It's always been possible to put more damage than Trance can heal into a grav, so we'll see how that develops over time. The changes to Sombra have been published as well. EMP disables Wrecking Ball's minefield for 10 seconds, which is quite a long time if you think about it, especially as normally minefield lasts for 20 seconds, and especially as you think on how successful Hack is going to be on to Hammond, because unlike D.Va, his weapon isn't as reliable to use all the time in spam, he kind of needs to be in the ball form. You get a hack on Hammond as he's trying to come in, and he can't escape, he can't go in ball form to hide his head hitbox, and if he doesn't get adaptive shields off, he's just donezo. Now that Sombra can counter his ultimate as well, to some degree, I think we'll start to see her, along with the CC options, to be a very good answer to Hammond. She can cancel her reload in order to hack, just like McCree can do with his flashbang, in order to do it reactively in the heat of battle. The detection radius was reduced back to two meters, so you can sneak past narrow corridors, that's pretty important, and I think with that you can finally start to think of the Sombra rework to be an actual buff, where I assumed they were going to move her. But here at the end there's ones that you might not have heard about, because I didn't know this. Translocator can now be destroyed with the interact key without looking at it. We knew that, but this one, sound cue heard by enemies dramatically reduced. That'll help her infiltration tactics as well as Translocator at the break of the fight when there isn't a lot of spam going on, no gunfire or anything, you're just setting up up in order to get a big flank or to set up an escape route. A lot of times the enemy could hear where that translocator was or where it was coming from if you're using it aggressively and adapt, especially Zenyatta's being able to hear it or the decloak itself in order to hit trance before she could EMP. That's a pretty big deal because the speed at which she comes in and out of stealth and all that with her movement speed slowed down, which seems to be the change that they're going to be keeping, makes her a bit sluggish overall. So she should be more effective with the stealth tactics if they're reducing the speed at which she moves when and in Viz, which is a pretty big deal. So let me know what you think of the balance changes, especially the new ones that we're finding out about just today. But moving on, now we'll talk about the Overwatch World Cup teams. The website Abacus wrote an article of all of the announcements of the different teams thus far. We'll link that in the description for you if you want to peruse the different rosters, because I won't have time to go over all of them. So to start, we're going to rapid fire do some honorable mentions for the different countries that are going to be participating, because realistically, any of these teams can just pop off if they have good synergy. A lot of teams are going to have owl pros on them, so 
Everyone's got a fighting chance, unless you face Korea, of course, then you're just gonna lose. Team Finland, you got Fraggy, Zappis, Linkser, Taimu, Davin, Big Goose, Shaz, the very skilled backline of Gladiators. You gotta think that Fraggy's gonna be pulling out the Reinhardt, and Linkser and Taimu have had really hot streaks as well, especially Taimu, who in Stage 4 completely made a comeback and looked to be just like his former self. Team France was formidable as well last year, and I expect the same this year. The old Rogue lineup going to be returning yet again again. Soon AKM, Nico, Unko wins. It'll be interesting to see if they still have synergy from their old team prior, but the star here for me is Soon, who has really stepped up his game after grinding in the Overwatch League. He's expanded his hero pool, and I think he's going to be the star, bolstered by the addition of Poco now, who's quite the playmaking off tank. Team Rush are going to be giving some serious DPS firepower with Shatterburn mistakes and unfixed on the roster. And although I've seen some of these other players in contenders, I'm not sure where I rank them so much. Remember last year, Russia actually did get quite far, but lost in a clutch match against Canada, sending Russia to the loser's bracket to face South Korea. And we all know nobody beats South Korea. That was an epic match. And I kind of hope we see a revenge matchup between them and Canada. Team Sweden reinforce, gets off the desk and goes onto the stage. I look forward to seeing him play again. Stapled names, Snillo to Vic. IDDQD, hopefully it can get some play time. They'll be a fun team to watch. Team UK, Christopher is a tank player that I think a lot of people may have forgot about. He kind of bounced around a few different rosters and kind of got lost in the shuffle. And from reports of players, he's a very good shot caller, which Team UK will need because just between you and me, I heard that Team UK last year didn't take practice that seriously. And after the group stage kind of got wrecked. Smex Kib and Mikey A are playmakers on the off tank and DPS roles respectively. Boombox down there on the Zenyatta hasn't had a spectacular Overwatch League, but was one of the innovators in Zenyatta gameplay. It'll be cool to see him reprise some of his star Zen fragging. Now, before we get into who I think are the top teams that you want to be terrified of, Epicus also published photos of the different locations that the group stages will be played in. And man, these are beautiful. Korea's group will be played in Korea. USA will be played at the Blizzard Arena, where we watch the Overwatch League. That'll feel right at home for many of them. They won't have to get a flight. The third group will be in Bangkok, Thailand. Looks beautiful. I wish I could go. And the fourth group will be played in Paris, France. And to the final three that I want to focus on, being American, I want to cheer on the USA. We'll look at them first. Muma, Super, in at Main Tank, and McGravy from Contenders and Space from the LA Valiant in Off Tank. DPS, Dante, Sinatra, Hydration, and Zachary supports Sleepy, Raucous, Elk, and Moth. A combination of a few players from some hot NA contenders teams and a mix of some of the best owl pros from Shock, Houston Outlaws, and the Gladiators. The biggest one for me is Space. I don't think the Valiant win in Stage 4 against NYXL was a fluke. I do think NYXL was holding back and playing a lot of dumb strategies and setups and play styles. However, what Space brings to the off-tank position, along with the intelligent play that I know Muma has on all three main tanks, is going to make for a formidable front line. And when your tanks are that good, it kind of almost doesn't matter how good the DPS are, but they have good DPS as well. You might think Dante, Sinatra, Hydration, well, they're owl pros, right? Well, they're going to be the best. I think Zachary is going to be the star DPS on this lineup, especially if you've seen his Hanzo in Contenders. Holy moly. As for the back line, I'd say Raucous, kind of like Boombox, has a chance to redeem himself as he didn't have the best Overwatch League, but he played really well in the World Cup last year, especially in the tight loss against Korea. Now next, let's look at Team Canada. Jane has been streaming a lot of VOD reviews, showing us the behind the scenes look of his team. I wish all the teams streamed their internal scrims or VOD reviews. That would just be a dream for me. But because of that, we have a bit more information on how this team operates in comparison to the other teams that are practicing in private, which might be the smarter option to do strategically speaking, but worse for my spectating pleasure. Between Agility, Surefor, and Mangachu, just like last year, these guys are bringing DPS firepower. And now, Mangachu, unlike last year, won't have to fill in on that off-tank position because they've got Note in there, who's one of the most stable D.Va players in the league. Between Surefor and Mangachu, on Widowmaker and Hanzo, their double sniper is going to be sick. And for the Burgita and Projectile roles, like Farah and Junkrat, both Agilities and Mangachu just pop off. They are actually insane. Of course, the Superstar XQC is in at main tank, 
but he's looking very rusty right now, and I think Shane might see a bit more playtime if XQC can't get up to speed fast enough in the competitive rule set again, as I think Shane plays a bit more reserve, which is definitely important in the burst damage meta, where tanks, if they're ever out of position for a second, just get blown up. An embarrassment of riches on Team Canada, it's gonna be pretty hard for them to pick between Crimzo and Rolf, who are both all-star contenders level Zenyatta players. Crimzo's better mechanically, but Rolf might fit better in the team context with shot calling and experience, which definitely matters. Some of these pro Zens guys look like mini Jonex. Crimzo is that kind of guy where he had so many orbs that he's basically another DPS. That's the kind of Zen we're talking about. But for our last team, seeing this get revealed was like a punch to the chest because you can just feel the power emanating off the screen, vibrating as if the roster list alone is charging up to be Super Saiyan 4. Sebiobi, Carpe, a Libero Fleta Fate Fissure Mecho Fury Arc Animo Jonat Karif Ah Run away Run away these guys are incredible. Now, granted, Fate's not gonna have space by his side, but Mecho is basically the next best off tank, in my opinion. So they can play them too, very similar to how they do in Valiant, or frankly, how NYXL do. Both teams play their tank line quite similar, and this team has the best of both worlds. And we have Fissure, who can come in for like a playmaking playstyle, especially on his Winston. As if that wasn't enough, we've got the best backline in the entire world. Ark and the King himself, Jonak, and we haven't even mentioned the damage dealers yet. How many Overwatch League MVP candidates can you fit on one team? Carpe, Sabiobi, Libero, Fleta. They all play everything. They all play Widowmaker. Most of them play Hanzo to an insane degree. Got two of the best tracers in the world, if they ever want to run that. Libero and Fleta are among the best Faro players. I know a lot of people don't like how dominant one region is in the world, but holy moly. You can just write these guys into the playoffs right now, guys. The scary thing is... There might be another one or two full 12-man rosters that Korea could make that would also be in contention to make the finals as well. Because just think about it, we're leaving off players like Gesture, Saya Player, there's tons of sick supports that just aren't making the cut anymore. Ryu, Jaehong, and Toby are nowhere to be seen, which is just brutal. The competition in South Korea is so high, all-star players can't even make backup on the Korean roster. And honestly, I, I can't argue with any of these selections, not one. This roster has the most flexible ability and the highest skill peak of any roster in the World Cup and they're gonna win it all. Maybe Canada or USA can come close but ultimately as we all know the coaching in Korea is better as well or at least it's assumed to be. I would absolutely love to see Team USA with Coach Arrow make a big upset or Jane for Canada. I'll be rooting for both of them. I'm a huge fan of what both of them do and have accomplished thus far in the Overwatch community but it's going to be intense guys. Well, that's gonna be it for today's guys. Let us know your thoughts on any of the subjects covered today, buffs and nerfs on the PTR and the Overwatch World Cup rosters. It's going to be sick. I think a lot of people are more hyped about the World Cup than they are even a lot of the Overwatch League games because your country is on the line, not just your favorite team. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe because we upload each and every day. So you're going to want to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.